This video is going to be about the volume of a cone. The volume of a cone is found by taking one-third pi r squared and multiplying that by your height. Make sure that you have this formula added to your blue sheet. And if you have your ISN, take notes for tomorrow. Um, this needs to be on page 89 in your notes. The heading, you can say volume of cones. The first example that we are going to do is you have a cone with a radius of 5 centimeters. So we can replace the R with 5 and a height of 12 centimeters. So we can replace the H with 12. Now we have everything that we know or that we need. One third pi R squared times your height is your formula. So let's plug in our radius and let's plug in our height. We have one third pi 5 squared times 12. When you multiply all this through, you're going to have one third times 25 times 12 times pi. This reduces down to 100 pi or 314 centimeters cubed. Again, it doesn't matter if you keep it in terms of pi or if you multiply through pi or if you use 3.14. The next example, a cone's base has a circumference of 21 pi. So that circular base has a circumference of 20, 21 pi. If you remember back from today's lesson, the circumference was found by taking 2 pi r or diameter pi. I'm going to set my circumference equal to this 2 pi r. So 21 pi equals 2 pi r. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to figure out what the radius is. To find the volume of a cone, we need to know that radius because that is part of our formula. So when we divide by 2 pi, the pi's are going to cancel out and we're left with 21 over 2. The radius is now going to be 10 and a half. Now, we know the radius and we know the height. Radius and actually this is a mistake on my part. This is the height of 2r minus 3. So we are going to replace this h with 2r minus 3. And we can replace this r with 10 and a half. So let's go ahead and plug everything into our formula. We have 1 third pi. Your radius was 10 and a half, so we can square that. And then our height was 2r minus 3. Now, we just found the radius. The radius was um, 10 and a half. So we can actually plug that 10 and a half in here. We're going to have 1 third pi, 10 and a half squared, and then we're going to have 21 minus 3, which is just 18. Now you, you can just go ahead and solve this like a normal volume problem. When you do that, and you do all your calculations, you're going to get 661 and a half pi, or if you want to multiply it all out, you're going to get 2,077.11 centimeters cubed. Example 3, find the volume of the cone shown below. Now this time they do not give you the radius and they do not give you the height. But we do know the angle that it is creating up at the top. So if you want to redraw that triangle, you can probably already tell yourself, oh, we're going to have to use trig. You are correct. We have a hypotenuse of 18, so we can't even use Pythagorean theorem here because we only have one of our, right, or one of our sides of our right triangle. So let's find our radius first. To do that, we have our opposite side and we have our hypotenuse to angle 25. So we're going to say sine of 25 equals your opposite over hypotenuse. Create a proportion and cross multiply. Your radius is going to be 18 times sine 25. When you calculate this, you are going to get a radius of around 7.61. Now you can go back and use the Pythagorean theorem because we have two of our sides, but I'm going to go ahead and just keep it consistent and go ahead and use trig. So when we, we look at this, 
we still have our hypotenuse, but now we are using or finding h, so that's our adjacent side. So we're going to say cosine of 25 equals height over um, hypotenuse or adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, create a proportion and cross multiply. Your height is going to come out to be around 16.31. So now that we know our radius and our height, let's just go ahead and plug it into our volume formula. Our radius was 7.61. We need to square that, and then we need to multiply that by our height. If you want to take a minute and do that, go ahead. Your solutions should come out to be somewhere close to those values. Now that I just look at my notes, I have done this problem wrong. I just calculated my volume wrong. I was looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry. You are going to have a volume of 314.85 pi or 988.63. Again, I apologize. Example number four, find the volume of the cone shown below. Again, we do not have enough information to figure out your radius and your height using Pythagorean theorem. So we need to pull this triangle out and again use trig. If you want, you can pause the video and try this on your own. Let's go ahead and find the height first this time. If we want to find the height, we're going to have the adjacent side and we're going to have the hypotenuse. In that case, we have to use cosine. So cosine of 13 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And in order to find your radius, we are now going to have the opposite in hypotenuse, which is sine. So we'll have sine of 13 equals r over 28. Your height comes out to be 27.3 feet, and your radius is going to come out to be about 6.3 feet. Now that should just be a review from all of the trig and all of the area that we did. Now let's go ahead and calculate the volume. Plugging in our radius and our height, 6.3 squared, and then 27.3. Your volume should now come out to be 361.2 pi or 1,134.10 feet cubed. The last type of problem that you are going to see is, again, these effects on the volume. Um, if you quadruple or multiply by five, triple dimensions, or we're going to try something new now. We're going to cut it in half. So the original problem is you have a cone with a radius of 8 centimeters and a height of 12. Find the volume. So let's go ahead and do that. One-third pi 8 squared times your height, which is 12. Take a minute and find that volume. Keep it in terms of pi. you should get a volume of 256 pi. So in the first part, part A, they're asking you to multiply the dimensions by 5. So my new radius is now going to be 40, and my new height is now going to be 60. So now calculate the volume. you should get 32,000 pi. Now let's go ahead and compare these values. If we, we knew that the original cone had a scale factor of 1, so that was the original, and then we wanted to go to this part A, we're multiplying by 5. So from the smaller, the original, to the new cone, that scale factor is going to be 1 fifth. If you remember back from what we did in class, what did we have to do to calculate the volume? Do we have to keep it the same? Do we have to square it? Or do we have to cube it? You should be telling yourself, well, we had to cube it. 
So we're going to take 1 cubed, which we're going to get 1, and if we take 5 cubed, we're going to get 125. So what are the effects? It's going to be 125 times bigger. Okay, now let's go ahead and try this again, but we are going to now cut the dimensions in half. So for part B, again, we have a radius of 8. And we're going to multiply that by our height of 12. We had a volume of 256 pi. Now cutting those dimensions in half, my new radius is going to be 4 centimeters. And my new height is going to be 6 centimeters. So let's go ahead and calculate this new volume. 4 squared times 6. Your new volume in terms of pi is going to be 32. Now, how are 256 pi and 32 pi related? Well, those pi's are going to cancel, and when you reduce this, you're going to get 1 over 8. So this dimension, if we cut the dimensions in half, it's going to become 8 times smaller. And the reason being is, again, the original scale factor from the original one to the new one is we cut that in half. So 2 divided by 1 is 1. Or 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that's the original scale factor. To find the volume, we have to cube both of those. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So that's why it's going to become 8 times smaller. That is it for the volume of a cone. You have a closure question. You have two questions to answer. Make sure that you write these down. You will not have very much time in class um, tomorrow to... Tell me your solution.